Hi everyone, I'm Stan Lowry. In this short series, I thought we'd take a look at the history of theaters in and around Shelby, North Carolina. I'll start off with a trivia question. How many theaters have ever operated in Cleveland County? We may have the answer at the end of this video. Now, let's take a look at some of the theaters I've found. First up is the New Princess Theater. It opened in 1917. It was located at 130, 132 South Lafayette Street in Shelby. Since then, Shelby has renumbered the addresses and the present address is 232 South Lafayette Street. The marquee was typical of the time, rectangular with three sides exposed. Later, lights were added around the border and underneath. Admissions to the movies in 1917 was seven cent. Showing movies like Easy Street starring Charlie Chaplin, The Butcher Boy starring Fatty Arbuncle and Buster Keaton, and The Sultan's Wife starring Gloria Swanson. The New Princess Theater was showing silent films in 1925 and 26, still a year away from showing talkies. By then, admission had jumped to 25 cent. By 1941, it had been renamed the Carolina Theater and continued operation until 1960, where admission had grown to 50 cents. Hard times and outdated equipment made it hard to survive as a movie theater, and the following year it was converted into a Woolworths Five and Dime. Now several businesses occupy the building, which operates under the name Carolina Mall. The next theater on the list is Washington Theater. As we approach the theater from the Buffalo Street side, we can see it is a Quonset Hut style theater. It is located at 511 Weather Street in Shelby, North Carolina. It operated from the mid 1940s until at least 1955. As we cross Weather Street, we can see the marquee. It is a basic triangle-shaped marquee bordered with flashing chase lights. You can still make out the outline of the name Washington on the center of the marquee. With a brick false front with few streamlined modern details, the Washington Theater served Shelby's African-American community. In addition to movies, the theater sometimes presented live music. Rumor has it that Elvis Presley played here in the very early days of his career with Scotty Moore and Bill Black. The Three Stooges made an appearance here as well as the story goes. I would love to go inside and look around and imagine the stories from more than 65 years ago. Next up on the list is the Webb Theater. The Webb Theater opened in 1930 and had seating for 500 patrons. Admission was listed at 25 cent for matinee and 50 cent for regular showtimes. It was located at 9 East Marion Street in Shelby, North Carolina. In 1946 and 47, Pete Webb was listed as manager. Pete was a notable professional golfer in the 1920s and 30s and is listed in the Cleveland County Sports Hall of Fame. The Webb Theater closed in 1955 and has since been demolished. BB&T purchased the lot and built a new modern style bank in its place in the mid-1970s. The bank building still stands, but is now occupied by the accounting firm of Gregg and Gregg. For the next three theaters on my list, we will need to travel across Buffalo Creek and into Kings Mountain, North Carolina, located about 15 miles east of Shelby but still in Cleveland County. The first up is the Joy Theater. It is located at 202 South Railroad Avenue in Kings Mountain. Original seating capacity was 772. Now after restoration, seating capacity is 300. The Joy Theater opened June 1, 1949 in the heart of Kings Mountain. The original architectural design of the marquee was triangle shaped bordered with chase lights, but before construction began, the designers opted for a large, sweeping, curved marquee. It is currently home of the Kings Mountain Little Theater and is known as the Joy Performance Center. It is also host to the annual 
Reel-to-Reel Film Festival. Above the marquee is a great vintage-style vertical sign. The architect was M. R. Marsh. Two other theaters preceded the joy. The Imperial, which opened in 1930 with a seating capacity of 600. It was located less than a block from the Joy Theater at 207 West Mountain Street. The theater closed in 1955 and has since been demolished. All that remains is this empty lot. The third theater in Kings Mountain is the Dixie Theater, located at 216 South Railroad Avenue. Opened in 1936, the Dixie Theater with a seating capacity of 550. It was only half a block from the Joy Theater. The Dixie Theater was operated by Stewart and Everett Theaters. The Dixie Theater closed in late 1958, but the building is still standing and occupied by a retail store. Between 1949 and 1955, all three theaters operated less than one block from each other. That brings us to the Rogers Theater. The 1,200-seat Rogers Theater opened in 1936, showing Love on the Run, starring Joan Crawford and Clark Gable. Built in sections through the early 1940s, the theater's gray limestone facade exhibits Art Deco details and is one of only two examples of this popular 20th century architectural style in Shelby. The theater was constructed with a working vaudeville stage as this type of traveling entertainment was still very popular in the western part of North Carolina. With which he has entertained and mystified the crowned heads of Europe. And don't forget, folks, tomorrow night, East Lynn, and now the Great McGonagall. The Rogers Theater held live performances and showed films well into the 1980s. Famous North Carolina movie producer Earl Lawnsby used the theater to showcase many of his productions from the 70s and 80s. The next three theaters are tied together in a way. They were all corporate owned and they were all multiplex theaters. Gone are the days of 600, 700 or even 1,000 seat movie houses. Theaters were evolving and changing with fewer seats, an average of 300, but with multiple screens. Two, four, and eight screen multiplexes were popping up in every town across America. Hollywood was turning out more and more movies, and the public was responding with record ticket sales. From 1970 to 1974, ticket sales had grown 44% to more than 610 million moviegoers. And by the 1980s, the number would surpass 1 billion. Shelby's first multiplex theater was built in 1974 the Twin Cinema, located at 414 South Lafayette Street. It was owned and operated by Charlotte-based Stewart and Everett Theaters until 1986 when Carmike Cinemas took over operations. It was under Carmike Cinemas that the theater expanded from two to four screens. In 1991, Carmike Cinema built a new multiplex with eight screens on the west side of the Cleveland Mall parking lot. The Mall Cinema opened in 1991. Carmike operated both cinemas until 2005 when they built a newer, flashier, state-of-the-art 10-screen multiplex on the opposite end of Shelby's Cleveland Mall. Carmike decided to close the two smaller multiplexes when the Carmike Cinema 10 opened later that year. The Coed Theater is next on the list. Just a short drive over to Bowling Springs, North Carolina, the Coed was opened around 1950. It was located at 105 North Main Street in Bowling Springs. The manager was Willie Hamrick. These playbills from 1956 show some of the movies they were showing at the time. Drawing its patrons partly from the students of Gardner-Webb College, it was within walking distance of the campus. Ticket prices were around 50 cents at the time. I'm not sure when the theater closed its doors for the last time, but the Italian Garden Restaurant that calls it home now opened in 1993. Our next theater brings us to the end of our list, the State Theater. This Art Deco style gym opened its doors as the area's most beautiful appointed movie house on October 27, 1939. The local paper immediately praised it as 
one of the most strikingly beautiful building fronts of the modern day and prompted one patron to ask, is this really a Shelby Playhouse? Seating capacity was 556, with forced air heating and cooling, upholstered seats, and no balcony. This movie house opened the same year that Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. In 1939, ticket prices were 25 cents, and popcorn was a nickel. In 1953, the theater held a big event and gave away a new car. The lucky winner was Coit Self, a local cab driver. By the mid-1970s, the state sold to new owners. The Flick Theater chain operated the property for another 10 years. Even by doubling the screens and becoming the Flick Two, competition with the multiplex theaters proved too much and the theater went dark around 1982. The building sat dormant for 20 or more years with little or no activity. In 2006, a group of citizens got together and formed a nonprofit organization called Destination Cleveland County. With two projects in mind, one being a performance venue that could bring in national acts from all across the United States, they set forth with two things in mind, bring vitality back to the economy and preserve the legacy of a hometown hero, country music hall of fame member, Songwriters Hall of Fame member, Blue Ridge Music Hall of Fame member, North Carolina Hall of Fame member, and Grammy-nominated Don Gibson. Don wrote timeless hits, I Can't Stop Loving You, Oh Lonesome Me, Sweet Dreams, and around 76 other chart hits from the late 1950s to late 1970s. Don, along with Chet Adkins and others, are credited with changing country and western into the country music of today. On November 22nd, 70 years after the State Theater opened, the Don Gibson Theater was born. In 2019, the Don Gibson Theater celebrated its 10th birthday with over 300 concerts and more than 250,000 visitors during the last 10 years. We look forward to many more years of concerts and events and hope to see you again soon at the Don Gibson Theater. Guys, thanks for watching. I know this corona situation has us all wondering when it will end and when we can get back to some sort of normal. This country has been through a lot, but we are strong. Together, apart, we can fight this and win. We have rescheduled some concerts and hopefully we can get back on track with great shows at the Don Gibson Theater. So be sure to check out our video about changes to show dates for the 2020 season or visit DonGibsonTheater.com and stay updated. You can find both of those links in the description below. And now to answer the trivia question. How many theaters have operated in Cleveland County, North Carolina? Well, the answer is 12. This doesn't include any drive-ins or multiplex screens at each building. Comment at the bottom if you got it right or not. Or if you have any additional facts about these theaters or memories of attending any of these theaters in the past. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and check out DonGibsonTheater.com for future shows.